but I was in my younger days, certainly when I was the age of young Ryan there, quite a worrier. And I'd worry about things into the future. I'd worry about things I can't control. I'd worry about things that might happen that I couldn't control. And, you know, I don't think this probably defined me, but I look back and it's something that I did that I don't do so much now. And a specific reference, and I even use this, I was talking to someone this week and gave him an example of how I used to be a worrier as an example of how we can change who we are as a person. And many years ago, I was going to buy a new car. Um, This was back when the government was doing this scrappage scheme here in the UK. So you could take up your beaten old heap of a car, which is definitely what I got. And they take it as a deposit to a new car. So it's the first time I bought a new car. Very excited. Traded in my knackered old VW Passat for a brand new Fiat Punto, living the life. And you had to take in with you proof of ownership and proof of the car had an MOT. Now, I'd lost the MOT certificate, got some printout online that confirmed it was MOT. Went in the dealership, they took the paperwork, and they were like, oh, we need to double check, we can take this, and went off to the manager's office. And I sat there fretting. It's not going to work. They're not going to take it. What we can do? That's not going to work. I don't know how we're going to do this. Like really worried that this was not no no evidence it was. They've gone off into the room. They want to logically. They want to sell the car. They're going to make it work. I had the documents there, but I was really worrying. But my partner at the time got quite frustrated with me. I think because this wasn't the only time I do it. It was kind of like a well, you just relax. They haven't even come back yet. Type of comment to me, which I don't think I would in the same situation. I wouldn't do that now. I'd be a lot more. It's a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing. I don't know what it is until it happens. I've done all I can do. Whatever conversation they have in the room is outside of my control. Some of that through my own growth as a person over the last 15 years. And a lot of it, I think, influenced by this podcast and conversations we've had and things like that. And then someone I met five, six years ago, maybe, turned me on to the concept as mindfulness. Was a big advocate for it and the benefits of it. And in my head, I kind of half dismissed it as that's not my sort of thing. But I was curious enough and I respected the person enough to give it a bit of a look. But I didn't I did bits, but it wasn't really rooted in my head. And I think what's happened more and more over time is I've realized that what are mindfulness practices are the things that help keep me calm. I just didn't realize they were mindfulness. And I look back and actually I think how much at times I was in the moment and, you know, things around mindfulness about focus. They literally there's a vent in my wall over there in the chimney press where air comes through. And you, if I just was to focus on that for one minute, block everything out, stare at it, just helps center you, helps bring your thoughts. And there's loads of things like that. And I think I did things like that without even realizing. And like I've talked about on a lot of podcasts in the past, once you can harness things you do and build and develop them, you can really, really utilize them. And I've now actually would say I'm an advocate for trying not, you know, I couldn't read off a load of stuff about it. I couldn't tell you a load of authors and stuff, but there are practices that I utilize. Some work for me, some don't work for me. Joe, I'm never going to start meditation, I'm afraid. I tried it. I did like it. I don't know. It's just not my thing, but there's loads of other things in that space that I can do. So I just want to kind of use this particular podcast to be an advocate for mindfulness and for those out there that have not tried this or thought about it or heard of it, just to give it a little bit of a go and see if it helps. Because I genuinely believe, you know, in this world in which we live, it's a great way to, regardless of what's going on, not making problems bigger, not marginalising, nothing else, it's whatever's going on, it's a way just to bring a bit of calm and balance to yourself to help you through day-to-day things. (laughs) 